Good afternoon to you. Mark Sada, HurricaneTrack.com here Monday now, the 23rd of October 2023. And things just keep on being busy out there. We've got Tammy, still a hurricane after coming out of the Caribbean. I'm going to show you a video clip from Guadalupe a couple of days ago, proving my point once again that heavy rainfall can be a pretty substantial impact. Of course, Tammy also brought hurricane conditions to Barbuda. A small compact system, but it was impactful nevertheless. We have, what do we got, Otis now down in the southeastern Pacific. The southeast Pacific trying to play catch up. And then, of course, we had Norma, which menaced, and that's definitely a good word for it, the southern Baja, irritating quite a few people down there. And it's trying to finally make landfall now along mainland Mexico. And then to add to all this, not on this particular thumbnail graphic because it's I made this a little while ago, then I prepped everything else. We have another system, probably a new depression forming down in the extreme southwestern Caribbean Sea. So a lot to discuss. Let's get started. First of all, on the interactive map, different look to the base map today. Went with a physical relief map, as we call it in the biz. So here is Tammy and its cone uh, of uncertainty, or whatever you want to call it. And then we have Otis over here in the southeast Pacific. And then here is Norma finally dying away. But Norma's moisture is going to stream its way up into this region and bring quite a bit of rainfall, much needed rainfall, to that region. And then again, we're going to have something developing, it looks like, right down here off the coast of Central America in the Southwest Caribbean Sea later today. We can see that reflected nicely on the National Hurricane Center homepage, 95L. The data from satellite imagery, I'll show you that in a minute, shows that, yep, we are developing a well-organized low-pressure area down there. Probably going to have a short-lived depression, and if it can get organized quick enough, it would be a named storm. And that would just about exhaust the list. Almost there. So we'll be watching this. It's going to be a big rainmaker, of course, for our friends down there off the coast and onto the land areas of Nicaragua and vicinity. Meanwhile, we have Tammy out here moving away from the islands, and um, the pressure is still kind of high-ish, 993 millibars, but Tammy's looking more organized on satellite. I'll show you that in just a minute. Meanwhile, in the eastern Pacific, again, there's Norma finally coming ashore. It's post-tropical now, so the low-level center will die away, but that moisture left over from it, let's use green, yellow-green, that moisture will make its way up into this area and beyond. I'll show you that on a nice graphic from the Weather Prediction Center in just a little bit. And then we have Otis, and Otis will make landfall up in southern Mexico. So yeah, the tropics just keep on cranking despite the El Nino. We're going to talk about that too and later on. We've got a lot of tabs up here today, a lot to talk about. <clears throat> so Michael Fisher down in Miami, if this will, there we go, come on. Uh, associate scientist at the University of Miami, just pointing out who Michael is. Nice tweet from a little while ago. There it is, close-up animation of what's happening with 95L, developing that pretty robust low-level center. Very small system, but it's got that banded look to it. On its way to becoming a depression, it does look like you can see it here on a more recent satellite animation over at Tropical Tidbits. And uh, this could become a short-lived depression, maybe even a tropical storm, if the data indicates it, but nevertheless, another depression. And uh, you don't see, this is really interesting, you don't see upper level winds just cutting across the system, tearing it apart. And yet it is down here in the deep tropics, Western Caribbean, during a significant El Nino, and yet we've got this. I think Michael mentioned that too, right? Yep, in late October, in an El Nino year. Wow, pretty remarkable. Close up of Tammy. Tammy's trying to get better organized here. Uh, you can see the low-level center probably tucked right in here somewhere. A uh, pretty decent outflow over on the west side. And, um, you know, decent inflow right over here with a nice band. Just north of the islands, including Puerto Rico. Still some squally weather in parts of the islands down there of the northeast Caribbean. It'll take a little longer as Tammy slowly pulls away. But Tammy did bring some rather unpleasant weather to our friends down in Guadalupe. Let's start the video over. I didn't realize it was just looping. Probably a billion views just from me. <laughs> um, anyway, 
Um, yeah, this is what it looked like a couple of days ago down in, this is the 22nd, so I guess that's yesterday. The video came in yesterday. I saw this um, over on Twitter. That's what I'll always call it. I've said that before, and I stick to it. That's the heavy rain. That's the result. You know, you get the uh, hey, nice pizza shop there. Hopefully they're going to be okay. But, um, yeah, very heavy rain can cause problems even when these are just tropical storms or minimal hurricanes. We must understand impacts, and that is an impact down there from Tammy. Now, this is very interesting still what we're looking at with our overall pattern. We got our El Nino here, and it's pretty robust, but we still have the very warm Atlantic relative to average. All of that is still very much in play. Very warm relative to average in the Western Caribbean. All the water temperatures where Tammy uh, has resided, also above average. And this pattern has really helped to give us this pretty busy hurricane season. The ace points will eventually get above 140. And if I remember correctly, 2021, the ACE score, that's accumulated cyclone energy, the wind output energy from all the systems combined. 2021, we had an ACE of about 141, if I remember correctly. And I was thinking once we got into September that we would probably hit about 200. Still 60 points shy of that, but the season is not over. And with all of this very warm water, relative to average in the Caribbean, and the Atlantic out here, we could get something between now and even the end of the calendar year beyond the November 30th end date that mankind has set on calendars for the hurricane season. It wouldn't surprise me if we just keep getting development wherever, even if these are short-lived, tacking on five, eight, ten more ace points here and there, getting closer to 150 or even 160. 200 is going to be a stretch and um, I just figured the way things were going, it wouldn't surprise me to get to 200. Ace is important because it really does show us the quality of the season. And we did have a few big ace producers. That means that they were strong and they lasted a long time. We think specifically uh, Lee. Lee was a Category 5 at one point. But we still have the El Nino out here. That's going to have implications for the winter and next spring. And then this is going to die away. I am almost certain of it. The climate models are starting to show that fairly significantly now. We'll start talking about that more in just about a month. We're not quite there yet. We still have hurricane season left on the clock. We'll get there, though. Broad satellite animation here really puts things into perspective. There we have the leftovers of Norma, and that moisture now streaming up into Mexico and into uh, Texas and into Oklahoma. Then we have Otis down here, small-sized tropical storm. But that will bring some flooding concerns to our friends down here in southern Mexico. This is 95L. It doesn't look like much here. Small, that's why we did the zoomed-in satellite animation for you. Again, that could go on to become a depression. Maybe a very short-lived tropical storm we'll see. And then this really helps to show that uh, Tammy here is starting to ramp up a little bit more. Wouldn't surprise me to see this get to Category 2. It was forecast to be a Category 2, but they've backed off on that. This is the trough action that came down and helped to steer Tammy to where it is. Hey, that was pretty good the way I, that was almost the exact track it took, at least this part. But the idea is that this energy is probably going to lift out and kind of leave Tammy behind. Some of the models do still take it out to sea. Some of them still bring it back west. And then strong upper level winds rip it apart. I'll show you that as we move forward here in the uh, next few days. But first, lower 48, just want to show you this, this moisture here that's going to stream in from the remnants of Norma in the eastern Pacific. Watch this over the next few days. See how that rain, those greens, and then you get your oranges and reds right through there. This is the next two to three days. Big area of high pressure over the eastern U.S. and the western Atlantic. The backside of it pulling in that moisture, uh, what was left from Norma as well as Gulf moisture. Much needed rain for this area. Definitely. And at least it waited until after October 14th so that all of us could enjoy the eclipse out that way. But now, no eclipse to deal with or to anticipate, not till next April. So let it rain and give people the moisture they need out there. That'll be nice. And look, starting to get these blues in here, more and more snow. 
as cold air starts to filter down into the lower 48 as we uh, go through fall and closer to winter. Yes, hurricane track, we will be active as uh, the winter sets in. Who knows what we will encounter this year? We'll talk about that more later, too. All right, let's focus on this, the rainfall. Again, this is interesting because it does have indirect connections to what was left over from Norma and some of these quantitative precipitation forecast output values. Just a fancy way of saying there could be quite a bit of rain, several inches. Could lead to some localized flooding, especially if it comes down fast and furious. But much needed rain, and that extends all the way up for thousands of miles uh, around that high. You can tell, where's the high? The high is over here. And, you know, I can just kind of draw it in for you, right? And then you got low pressure and troughiness coming in, winter weather up here. Basic meteorology for you. You can really pick things out just by looking at the pattern in front of you, if you know what you're looking at. All right, now, in regards to the tropics and Tammy, this is going to be a wild few days, all right? So as long as we can keep Tammy away from land and creating any problems like what we saw in Guadalupe and what they dealt with in Barbuda, uh, let it rack up some ace points and get it closer to my 200 that I was kind of thinking would happen. Uh, but all that kidding or whatever aside, going to be an interesting time coming up because, again, some of the models like the GFS, which I'm going to show you here, do eventually get it out, but then like the Canadian will look at that, tries to bring it back, and then there are you know many, many different, uh, different scenarios in between over the next few days. But first of all, let's use red here. This is the GFS, 850 millibars, so it's about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. And again, we're looking at the vorticity of the system. Just helps me to really identify where it is uh, in relation to everything else. I really like this layer of the atmosphere, my preference. So what do we got? Well, we move this out into time. There it goes, right? Go back and forth. It's heading out. The trough left it, but it still tries to follow, mainly going around the backside of ridging that's sitting out here. And then you've got ridging that's building in around it, and so it just doesn't have much choice but to go this way. But steering currents are not super-duper fast, so it kind of hangs around like, well, maybe I'll go to Bermuda I hear they've got some uh, good dark and stormies there, but then it's like, nope, never mind. I'm going to head on out this way, and that's about 180 hours out. That takes us to Halloween, right? So let's see. That's the GFS that does this kind of deal. What about the Canadian? Canadian's been doing really well the last few years with its tropical realms, among other things, too. So let's just see what the Canadian has over the next 10 days. Similar evolution, but it turns it back west, south of Bermuda. Bermuda is right there. So it turns it back west, fairly south of Bermuda, well to the south. And then it's like, uh-oh, what's it going to do? But then you, you see it just kind of disappear. Got to be the strong upper-level winds at this point. In fact, we can go look at that, 200 millibar wind. Yep, definitely having westerly winds over the top of it. That's not going to help. Big area, high pressure, farther to the south. But Tammy wouldn't be down there to take advantage of that. So we'll see which one of these models ends up being right, so to speak. Finally, what time is it right now? It's just a little bit after 2. Probably have a couple of frames of the new Euro out to 48 hours. So we'll see what it shows. There's 24, 48. Now, it's interesting, the Euro definitely ramping it up there. Um, let's see what we have. You don't get a lot of options on this particular version of the Euro. Yeah, I was looking for my sea level. There it is. That'll work. Nope, it didn't show it either. That's okay. Let me get me back on and bail myself out of the different Euro panels. It's just you never know which one, like the more extended version where you get the three-hour panels, you get more details. I wanted to see what the pressure was, but just knowing the vorticity signature that is pretty solid. Let me just drop out and just see what we... I don't use this one too much. That's the upper levels. We don't need that. There's precip moisture, nothing there. Mean sea level pressure, and winds, anomalies, 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 anomalies. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll see it later on. The bottom line, the Euro, at least here, with the vorticity signature, 850 millibars, that's pretty robust. So I think this could make it to Category 2, the water temperatures out there are still warm. They are warmer than normal, and it's you know got a pretty favorable environment overall. So don't be surprised to see Tammy get up to near 100 miles per hour. Maybe 
Why not? Because a lot of these systems, if they go, they go big, it seems. Maybe it overachieves and eventually makes it to a Category 3. We'll see about that. Now, one thing it will do as it sits out there is it will generate some swells, and those are eventually going to make their way back down to the north-facing beaches of the islands and eventually over to some of the beaches over here along the shores of the western Atlantic. So if you're still out there surfing, which why not? Water temperatures aren't too terribly bad. you got a wetsuit for that, right? Might get some wave action out of this, so be sure to check your favorite surf sites in a few days and see what they are saying as you get some late season surf activity to uh, to enjoy, Yeah, as long as you're careful with it. Speaking of um, surf, I'm trying to figure out a good way to segue into this. Let's just jump into it. Who needs a segue, right? Hey, uh, what was this, about eight years ago? Something like that? That's a long time now, right? Time is flying. You remember Patricia on this date. This caught me over in the For You part of Twitter. And uh, I was like, oh, that's right. Old Patricia, 215 mile per hour winds. Recon went in there. That thing had such a small eye. Man, the stories that those recon pilots and meteorologists were talking about, some of them who we talked to at various National Tropical Weather Conference meetings in the years since down in South Padre, that was a tough one. Very small, weakened rapidly as it made landfall, as you'd expect. Uh, such a small core, but it was the most intense hurricane ever recorded in either the eastern Pacific or the Atlantic Basin, so basically the western hemisphere as a whole, not including the West Pack, that's a whole different area, but in the eastern parts of the Pacific, the western hemisphere, Patricia is the record holder. Tiny little eye, 872 on the pressure. Wow. Luckily, nothing like that out there right now. Talk about an ace producer. The ace on that was just crazy high in terms of the ace per six hours. That's a whole mathematical computation thing. When they get really intense, your A score starts to go up faster and faster. And Patricia did that, even though it only lasted for a couple of days. So anyway, nothing like that out there now, thank goodness. But we do have our hands full with what we just talked about. We'll keep an eye on everything and see where we go. We only have a few days left, a little over a week or something like that, right? Eight days, and then it's Halloween, and then we get into November, the sixth month of the hurricane season, almost there and we're still very busy. As always, thanks for tuning in from those of us, all of us, at Hurricane Track. I am Mark Suddeth. I'm one of the group that makes this happen, the face of it, so to speak. We had a great back-end team, and they all uh, appreciate you tuning in just as much as I do. Have a great rest of your Monday. I'll see you again tomorrow.